people have talked about a miracle. Uh, I'm hearing about a nightmare. Uh, it's hard to be a parent tonight for a lot of us. Uh, you tell your kids, don't be a bully. You tell your kids, don't be a bigot. You tell your kids, do your homework and be prepared. And then you have this outcome and you have people putting children to bed tonight and they, they're afraid of breakfast. They're afraid of how do I explain this to my children? I have Muslim friends who are texting me tonight saying, should I leave the country? I have uh, families of immigrants that are terrified tonight. This was many things. I, 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 this was a rebellion against the elites. True, it was a complete reinvention of, of, of politics and polls, it's true. But it was also something else. We've talked about race. I mean, we've talked about everything but race tonight. We've talked about income. We've talked about class. We've talked about region. We haven't talked about race. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And that's the part where the pain comes. And Donald Trump has a responsibility tonight to come out and reassure people that he is going to be the president of all the people who he insulted and offended and, and, and brushed aside. Yeah, when you say you, know, you want to take your country back, you got a lot of people who feel that we're not represented well either. But we don't want to feel that someone has been elected by throwing away some of us to appeal more deeply to others. So there, this is a, a deeply painful moment tonight. I know it's not just about race. There's more going on than that. But race is here too, we gotta talk about it. Well, and views are one of the most consistent opinions that this president has. Well, Don, it's not about race, as you like to make it, because that's easy and lazy. It's about economics. My comment back to Maria is your children are going to have a much better economic future and a better chance for a I, good I job than they would have had him under time. another president. Now, let me, let me, you called on me, so let me finish. Truer words, minus you know what? the You know what, John Frederick? Have you, know what? you know what, John Frederick? John, until that last gonna comment, off, no, yeah, I'm going to cut speak. you off. Can we please cut him off? Can we take him off the screen? Can we take him? Can we get rid of John Fredericks? Thank you. First of all, I was going to let him speak until you doubly insulted me. I don't even need to respond to the lazy comment. I laid it all out in the thing. We can have this conversation and we don't need someone who's going to make excuses for racism. The last two of the British ISIS cell dubbed the Beatles, now jailed in Syria and suddenly fond of the home they spurned. Would you prefer to be tried anywhere in particular, like the UK? Definitely familiar familiarity is uh, the easier option. My experience with uh, British uh, judges is that they're quite fair and just. So yeah, I might miss like a fish and chips. They revel in their rights, like presumed innocence. When I tell them several Westerners they allegedly imprisoned and abused in ISIS jails like these have identified their voices and faces. It's just an accusation, legally speaking. You know, if, you, if, if Britain said we're going to deal with you by, with, but with barbaric law, or with law from, from the medieval ages, then, yeah, hung, drawn, caught me, right? That's not the case. That's, I'm just merely pointing that out. I don't believe in democracy, but I am being subjected to democratic law. So it is only right for those who claim to uphold this, to fully uphold it, because it, it's them at stake, not me, really. <laughs> the American uh, <coughs> administration or the British government, they will decided they want to be champions of the Sharia, uh, Islamic law, and apply Islamic law upon myself and Shafia, then by all means, uh, if not, then they should uh, adhere to that which they claim to be champions of. ISIS is nearly defeated, but the arrogance of their beliefs is not. What keeps you awake at night? There's these lice in my clothes uh, in the place I'm sleeping. So there will be some people who see you make a joke of that question and think that whatever's gone before to you is sort of been a bit of a laugh. Are you saying that there's nothing that you've witnessed here in Syria or been involved in that troubles you? No. If I want to talk about while I was in the Islamic State, the kind of things that keep you up at night is uh, the sound of like an F-16 jet 
flying in the sky and uh, some Syrian neighbours with these kids crying. There is so much bravado, it's hard to see if they really think it all, the videos, the savage beheadings, went too far. Do you regret that sort of messaging? Yeah, definitely. It would be damaging. And it's regrettable that, you know, that families had to see that. So Jaddy John is dead now. What kind of a guy was he? He was a friend of mine. For, for what reasons? For what reasons was he my friend? You need to have a reason to be a friend of somebody. I'm just asking you to describe him as a person. Oh, to describe him as a person. Mm. Obviously, I know the people in the Western world are not going to want to hear this, but truth has to be said where it's due. And he's one of the most loyal friends I've had, trustworthy, honest, upstanding. Were you surprised when you saw videos of him cutting off people's heads? Surprising, yeah. You didn't approve? Did I approve of the act or did I approve of the video? Did you approve of the act by your friend? I'd rather not answer that question. Live on Facebook, the details in the video and the case are disturbing to say the least, as disturbing as they are bizarre. Seeing as Rosa Flores joins me now with the latest. So I know Chicago police just held a press conference about, about this tape. What did they say? What, what do we know about this? And Anderson, I just got off the phone with police with a few more disturbing details. They tell me that the victim in this particular case was targeted because he has a mental health challenge. Uh, they described him as someone who was very tender. And while it took some police work, they said they were able to find the offenders, like you mentioned, four people in custody. But let me set the scene here. According to police, officers were patrolling on the west side of Chicago when they saw a man that was disoriented and traumatized. So the police officers sent him to the hospital, actually, Anderson. And then there was a battery call that came in. Police officers responded to that, and they were able to link the evidence from this battery call to this disoriented man. And then there you have it, video on social media that was able to fill in the picture. Now, before we show you these, this, this video, we should warn you that is, it is very disturbing. Take a look. Yeah, grab it, Cut oh my Damn, you cut it. Put a whole patch out of this. Boy. Why you do that? And no blood on the blade. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Oh my brother, my Donald Trump. 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 You see him? That that was broadcast live on from that, on social media while they while they were doing that, right? And, they, and I mean, they're talking about Donald Trump. They're saying, uh, uh, I mean, it seems like there's, uh, in in their words, some sort of a racial dimension to all this. You know, it really does sound like that, Anderson. We asked the police about that, and of course, the obvious question is: Is this a hate crime? Is this somehow? related to politics and, and all the tensions post the election. And uh, police say that at this point they're still investigating, but they do believe, they tell me, that this is more related to this young man's uh, mental health challenge. Now, you saw in that video, he's white. The offenders uh, you saw in that video are black. So it definitely raises all of these, these questions. But at this point, they still say they, they are still investigating motive. And what about the, the, the victim in this? Did, how is he doing now? You know, the police say that he's, that he's very traumatized. They say that he had a lot of difficulty to even start speaking to investigators or, or the police because of the condition that he was found in. Police say that they don't know if, if he spent 24 or even 48 hours with this group and, and they don't know exactly what they did to him, of course. They're still investigating that. He, he's still being examined. And, uh, but Anderson, we should know more within 24 hours. That's when we're expecting for charges to be filed. And, and when those charges do happen, then we'll know a little more as to 
what transpired. Or in the United States or wherever it is, they have started in earnest since the rise of ISIS. And that is a really important thing to remember, that the war in Syria, which has started to revel, uh, rather radicalize Muslims around the world, just as the war in Bosnia did, just as the war in Afghanistan did, people started to radicalize and decide that they needed to fight this. Well, this is what's happening in Syria and Iraq right now. And France is one of the leading uh, members of the coalition against ISIS. And France is generally known to want to take even more proactive measures than the rest of the coalition, mm -hmm. certainly more proactive measures against ISIS and frankly against Bashar Assad to stop the Syria war. Much more proactive, uh, if it could, than either President Obama or the British Prime Minister mm -hmm. or others. Uh, so this is a major issue that until the war in Syria is ended and until ISIS is defeated, not just contained, but defeated, and until uh, 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 an adequate offensive is mounted, according to most of those who observe and track this situation, this will continue, including the refugees, the migration, and all of that that is destabilizing Europe at this point. A French senator who I've been talking to for a long time, and in fact who was on CNN today earlier this morning, said to me, the message of today is that we cannot prevent this at this moment. She said, we in France are at maximum security alert. We've had the state of emergency. We are now going to extend the state of emergency. Nice is one of the most secure cities in France. It has very, very security-minded mayor, the president of the regional department, as they call it down there, have brought in more police, more surveillance cameras, more security, facial recognition technology, all of that. But it keeps happening. And, uh, and she said that's the message today. No amount of, of states of emergency is going to stop it. And she even went so far as to say, if any of your viewers has a solution and has the weapons for us to deal with this, send us your email. There is a sense of hopelessness, but a lot of it comes down to right. what is the trigger, and that is the active war in Syria and in Iraq right now. Figure out, take the tweet everybody's talking about today. People's lives are being shattered and destroyed by a mere allegation. Trump tweeted this one day after he defended a senior aide who was forced to resign amid domestic violence allegations. Now, the tweet reminds us of a couple of things. First, Trump has offered similar defenses of men accused of acting badly in the past. Remember Roy Moore of Alabama? And then there's this from a 1994 interview. A softness disappeared. It was a great softness to Ivana, and she still has that softness. Mm -hmm. But during this period of time, she became an executive, not a wife. Well, you now are married to a woman, and you, who would like to continue her career. Marla says she does want to have a career. Uh, there's a difference between having a career and working for me. Yeah, you have said you don't want Marla to work. You actually said no. that on, yeah, on the day of the wedding, actually. I, th I think I'm probably mixed. I have days where I think it's great. And then I have days where if I come home and, you know, I don't want to sound too much like a chauvinist, but when I come home and dinner's not ready, I go through the roof. What? I want to bring in Nancy Collins. She is the journalist who did that 1994 interview. I, I love how you just come straight at him, Nancy, and tell it like it is. What do you make of this new tweet from the president defending an accused wife abuser? Is that what you would have expected from him? Um, yes, unfortunately. He's always said inappropriate things about women, but what's new in this part of his life is the anger and the disdain that's attached to it. In our interview, for instance, he said to me, um, I tell my friends who, who treat their wives very well and get treated like crap in return that if you roughen up, it'll make your marriage much better. And I said to him, do you hear what you're saying? Yeah. And he actually doesn't. And he said, well, that's what I believe. So he doesn't even realize that that no, is a he, questionable statement at the very least. Not, to put it not at all, no. And the irony, too, Anna, is that he, he loves the image of being a faithful, one woman, one marriage, married guy. Those are the people he admires most. But I actually believe, by the way, that all this womanizing is highly overrated on his part. This is a guy who's a drastic germaphobe. He used to take four showers a day. He, until he ran for president, he didn't let anybody shake his hands. And, you know, as we all know, sex is messy, and I doubt he's going to invite 
so many unvetted women into his bed. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. But I think he likes the Playboy image, the Hugh Hefner. Who was his idol when he was growing up? I want to ask you about that comment we just played, this yeah. idea. When I come home at night and dinner's not ready, I go through the roof. I know there are things like that, which he said to you, that right. at the time, right. in the 90s, Right. He, he could kind of get away with, I right, guess. But right. imagine somebody of his stature, a socialite now, yeah. saying those exact words mm -hmm. in this spirit of the Me Too movement. Well, I, I, now they can't say them at all. And I think actually what's great about the Me Too movement is women finally have a voice. They can kind of verbally and publicly get even. The thing about Donald is, and here's, here's, what's, here's what's attractive about Donald. He is fun. When you're with him, he's full of beans. He's got a lot of charisma. He can be fun. I mean, that's why world leaders come in and see him. They are surprised. Personally, he's not the guy who is the public. Uh, his public persona is not who he is personally. That's not an excuse, however. This is a guy who, look, it's all about the mothers. His mother, you know, he, when he talks about his childhood, it's all about his father. You never hear him mention his mother. Why? Um, I think I, th I don't think she was a much of a player. I think that I, I think he learned how to treat women from the way his father treated his mother, and I think she was a bit of an afterthought. You know, it's a very interesting woman. She came from Scotland, uh, the youngest of ten kids, very hard scrabble farming. Only got through the eighth grade. When she came here, she was a domestic for four years. I mean, that's the real American story. But you mm -hmm. never hear him. Uh, talking that way about oh. her or reminiscing about her like that. Nancy. It's almost like he's embarrassed. Nancy. When did you come into possession of this tape? In March of this year. And, and do you have the entire thing? Because she says where you cut it off, she goes on to say there's no question. There's no question. She says that she was uncomfortable around this white farmer, that in her view he was expressing her superiority. And you air the por portion where she says so she found him a white lawyer, one of his kind. There's no question that you can watch the portion that you have on the website and start to think about what are her motivations. But she says she's trying to tell a parable and that she goes on to say that she realized she did have prejudices that she had her own prejudices here. And I'm going to play the well, last let, snippet. Let, let's yeah, let's yes. listen to one piece of the tape. that you. This is on your website. Yes, this part I she added seems that. To circle back. I, we, we kept that because it, because it says that she says that it's not just about race. It's also about rich versus poor. That was the exculpatory part. But she did express But racism. what happens next? What happens next? She, she says, I want you to listen to one of the things she said. Right, I didn't start fire here. her. I didn't fire her. This but, is not about Shirley Sherrod. Will you give the opportunity for the million strong Tea Party that see CNN and the mainstream media has maligned as racist. Will you give us the I have not maligned the Tea Party the, as racist. I said CNN. I did not say John King. You, you have given air to the NAACP charges and the Congressional Black Caucus charges that the, that, 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 that the N word was said 15 times by 15 different people at, by Congressman Carson at Congressman Carson and Lewis and Cleaver. I can prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that they created this out of whole cloth. It is a lie. And I want the opportunity to show America that the mainstream media, just like the journalist, which organized and colluded against people and even said, blame people on the right of racists to destroy their lives in order to stop the, the breaking of the Jeremiah Wright story. Uh, so racism is used by the left and the Democratic Party to shut up opposition. And I'm showing you that people who live in glass houses should not be throwing stones. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not on that list, and we're going to discuss it in the program tonight. I promise you, but I, I want to come back. You write in your column, and you believe this strongly, and I can hear it. And again, I have not called the Tea Party racist. We have had people on this I, program and other programs to air all sides of the story. I understand where you're going. Though. You say that the NAACP... Why won't you show the evidence? Why the, won't you show this evidence? Because it's too damning. Because it will show that a civil rights legend lied. It will show that the Congressional Black Caucus lied in order to malign, uh, in order to malign the whole of the Tea Party. That is an incredibly big story that that will absolutely blow a hole in the righteousness of the cause that the NAACP resurrected and brought up the false charge again. They were the ones that resurrected the false charge. I think that the Tea Party deserves an airing of these videos to show that the, the, the narrative that Congressman Carson described did not happen and that Congressman Cleaver wasn't even in the frame. They were, he was not even anywhere around them when it happened and he falsely claims that he was there. there this is, this 
this is a lie that will crumble the entire narrative that the Tea Party is racist and it is a manufactured political hit against the Tea Party because they're fearful that this group of people is going to amass going into November. The tape with Shirley Sherrod most offensively and it affirms why the Tea Party is such an important movement in this country. She says that people should get jobs in the government because you can't get fired. That is why the Tea Party is upset. It is because bureaucrats like Shirley Sherrod uh, uh, think that when they get into a position of power that they can hire people but and not fire th them. That, that, that is, that is the a problem with the Tea that's Party. That's a 